Richard is one of the first legendary commanders that players can get their hands on here in Rise of Kingdoms, and we haven't talked about him in a long time. And seeing as how his relic recently did get a buff today, we're going to be going over Richard in 2023 and whether or not he's worth investing in and if you should be using him. But first, what's going on, guys? Cheers. Some of you have been commenting on my soda drinking. This is sparkling water. This is LaCroix, okay? Anyway, let's take an updated look at Richard here in Rise of Kingdoms, and I just want to let you guys know know that this video is mainly for newer players if you've been playing the game since Richard came out then you you probably already know a lot about Richard but Richard is an infantry garrison and defense commander but don't be confused because the garrison tree does not mean that he is a good garrison commander or that he should even be used in a garrison and as a matter of fact outside of game modes like maybe Ark of Osiris you pretty much should never use Richard in a garrison and the reason for that is his active skill and this is a perfect time where we're going to go over all the skills on Richard so we know exactly what he's doing his primary skill and the main reason that people use Richard to this day maybe not for fighting but for many other things is because of his healing factor so he has a 1400 healing factor and debuffs up to five enemies in a fan-shaped area reducing their damage by 30 percent and March speed by 15 percent for two seconds so very powerful debuff relatively short duration unfortunately but the healing factor will ensure that Richard stays in the open field longer the problem with this in a garrison is that you are taking slightly wounded units and putting them back as healthy and then they're attacked again and then a portion of those units will become severely wounded so effectively you are converting slightly wounded units into severely wounded units you do not want to do that in a garrison because well because some of those troops actually die when he's a garrison okay you can actually just straight up get deaths in a garrison scenario and you don't want a garrison that will increase the number of deaths that you get like that's literally the opposite of of the point of a garrison okay his second skill here says troops led by this commander gain 10 percent increased counterattack damage and take 15 percent less damage that's nice that's all damage takes 15 percent less damage across the board very tanky and worthy of the defense talent tree third skill here says infantry units gain 15 percent attack and defense very vanilla very plain very boring third skill fourth skill here says troops led by this commander receive 30 percent increased healing effects and take 30 percent less damage from watchtowers for those of you who don't know watchtowers are only on your wall they're on your city wall if I can go back I will show you I don't know why that's not working here you can see this is your watchtower uh, they don't deal any damage anyway so that part of the skill is literally nothing uh, maybe at the very beginning of the game if you're less than city hall 25 maybe the watchtower damage has some influence on you but at the end of the day it's not gonna matter at all okay and healing infect enhancement obviously is just good for his first skill but really this four skill is not that great and then if you take a look at his expertise troops led by this commander take five percent less damage from all sources so that basically bumps this up to 20 percent damage taken reduction and all infantry units led by this commander deal two percent increased damage to cavalry units every 10 seconds the target's march speed is reduced by 50 percent for five seconds that last part of his expertise is really the best part of his expertise two percent more damage to calves is irrelevant because richard is not dealing very much damage anyway and he's not going to be able to catch the cavalry in the open field because he has no march speed at all now he is slowing down targets but in order for that to work you have to actually catch them in the first place next let's take a look at some talent builds now remember talents only apply to the primary commander and there are some instances where you may want to use Richard as a primary commander this is the talent build that I have for my Richard is it very good I mean not really but at the end of the day it, the problem with Richard is that he's not going to deal that much damage regardless this talent build I have specifically for battling barbarians in the open field and that is at this point in the game the primary use that I have for Richard now there is another use or a few other uses for Richard that we'll talk about later in the video so stay tuned until then and if you've made it this far in the video hopefully you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out a ton but taking a look at the talent trees here we go all the way up to hold the line here I'm a huge Huge fan of this talent it says when this commander's troops have only infantry units 10 percent chance for 20 percent damage taken reduction of two seconds it's a short timer but that's almost like a skill right there that's really good we get the six percent healthier one percent of defense we also get the rage engine on undying fury we actually skipped out on iron spear again because this is really for killing barbs but also again you're not really going to catch the cavalry and if you're going to use richard for pvp 
he's almost definitely not going to be a primary commander then we came all the way here we grabbed balance which reduces damage taken by three percent but also reduces damage dealt remember he's not really dealing damage anyway so there's no downside to that one and then loose formation reduces skill damage taken by nine percent totally fine we came all the way up to desperate elegy and you could see that we actually didn't have enough points to go all the way in here it's possible that you could argue you want to take this point away and put it into desperate elegy perhaps that that that's the way to go but essentially when this troop is reduced to 30 percent of units remaining they gain an extra 20 rage from each normal attack that they take that's at four and then at five it's 25 rage so that's really nice I only got it to three unfortunately but the other use that I have for Richard and probably one of the reasons that you're going to be using Richard is also in Sunset Canyon he's actually incredibly good in Sunset Canyon because of his healing and in Sunset Canyon you always fight to the death and if that's the case Desperate Elegy will come into play every single time which is very good but beyond that we actually grab medicinal supplies which gives you even more healing factor so essentially his healing factor is 1400 with this it's 1700 and his force skill gives him plus 30 percent if you have all three points there which is great we also grab testudo formation on the way there which is a very good talent as well overall a very tanky build that is not going to deal damage but it will last a very long time in the open field now if i was going to use richard for pvp for some reason maybe because i'm using him as a buffing march or something like that or maybe it's like K vk one and you want to use them as primary I would probably do something like this where you grab balance and loose formation over here you grab all the other talents on that row and then you just go all in on the infantry tree now one thing that you could do is actually take some points away and put them in fleet of foot if you want to move a little bit faster because you're going to be very frustrated with how slow Richard actually is so if you wanted to remove maybe talents from balance or maybe these little points off on the side here just to gain some more March speed that's something that you could do it's up to you and you know if you're kvk1 a lot of players aren't going to have max tech a lot of players are going to be relatively slow regardless so you know if you're using him in kvk1 you're probably at least a dolphin or a whale and this might be a good build for you to go for now i'm worried about putting this talent build in the video but i figured if you were going to use him as a garrison commander you could consider doing something like this now my assumption is that you're using this as a city defense which again you probably don't want to just don't use Richard please use like Martel Sun Tzu or something like that or Martel YSG something like that in the early game don't use Richard okay but if you are going to use him guess something like this would be good uh you could see I avoided medicinal supplies because you don't want more healing on your wall again nowhere to turn is good go for all the basically all the front line of that of that garrison tree you can come up here and get the front line of all the infantry because all this stuff does not have really anything to do with infantry except for this but you know realistically if your city's getting hit it's probably cavalry I mean Attila Takeda hello I know that's not kvk1 but regardless we have an extra couple extra points I threw it in infantry health even though it might be mixed if it's a city we grabbed balance over here you could rearrange some of these extra talents I didn't know what to do with them so I put them where I thought it mattered the most and that's what I came up with but again don't use Richard primary for a garrison okay so now that you have an idea as to what Richard's stats actually look like let's talk about what the pros of Richard actually are the first one and this is the most obvious one and that is chaining barbarians in the open field okay and now we're going to talk about pvp so don't don't leave the video just yet we're going to talk about pvp in a moment but first richard is my number one barbarian killer and you might be thinking omni York, that makes no sense he doesn't have the peacekeeping tree and that's correct however the thing about richard is that with his healing factor and the fact that he is so tanky he literally can last forever in the open field when fighting against barbarians assuming you have decent enough tech and tier four units you, you could use tier five but like that's expensive and of course his favorite pair is Yi song yay for this uh the whole point of barbarian chaining if you're new to the game is that when Richard is paired with Yi song yay Yi song yay's circular aoe is going to trigger nearby barbarians to attack you and that means Richard's going to attack them for free and the fact that he's so tanky means that he's going to be able to take these punches like a king uh, and then your other peacekeeping marches can swarm down that barbarian meanwhile Richard gets to hit it for free you also could just have Richard YSG no other marches and just chain free kills over and over again that's something you could do if you have the patience to do that the other thing that's amazing about Richard that a lot of people don't talk about is all the other events that you can use Richard in for example the Golden Kingdom okay this is effectively a PVE game mode it's an event that comes around that's essentially you versus 20 floors 
of enemies in basically a Sunset Canyon style game mode and Richard actually shines in Sunset Canyon remember he survives a long time and he heals himself in a game mode where you can't refresh your troops the only way to get more troops in Sunset Canyon is to just bring more with commanders that have an increased troop capacity or by healing them and Richard is the king of healing so he's very good in game modes like Sunset Canyon like Lost Canyon also game modes like golden kingdom but even beyond that you can use him in events like karak ceremony for example because he's going to stay alive for a long time as i mentioned there are some uses for him in Ark of osiris as well but in general you're mainly going to use him for tanking barbs and tanking during events that are really difficult for you to take down the enemies now I don't use Richard in my Sunset Canyon lineup right now I've been actually testing a couple of different things you can see here I have a Tark with a Herald over here in my offlane which is not not very common but I'm just testing it out I'm seeing how it's doing and it's actually it's actually better than you might think but a couple of things that you could do with Richard in your Sunset Canyon if you wanted to use him is one you could basically use him just like I'm using my Constantine Constantine here Guan with Richard is something you can use in sunset canyon in sunset canyon you are effectively making guan yu extremely tanky which means his aoe is going to pop off for a long time and he's going to be healing he's going to stick around for a while and this 30 percent increased damage applies to all the enemies in sunset canyon so essentially you're debuffing the entire enemy's lineup just by having richard over here in this corner this location is very important okay he either wants to be here or he wants to be like this okay just that though if you're that that's it okay you want richard there whether it depends on if you're attacking or defending and it also depends on the enemy's lineup if you're attacking so just keep that in mind but uh you want to put him here and put him behind guan the other thing you could do is you could put him in your off lane with a very tanky pairing such as uh richard primary with charles martel secondary this is a very common off lane and the reason for this is because again it's very tanky so your enemy will have uh, two choices either they can put their four armies like this to attack the Richard Martel which is gonna last a very long time and it's gonna really cause their off lane to deal a lot of damage to your marches but the other thing is that if they don't attack it it's just gonna last forever and kind of hold up one of your armies and that's basically the point of that off lane and honestly you have to get pretty far into season of conquest before you start to consider replacing that like seriously Richard Martel is slept on it's very very good in Sunset Canyon for a very long time because it's just so tanky and there's so much healing it's very good if I had better gear for my Richard I would consider just using it here as well but I don't I do want to talk real quick about his relic okay because we we talked about some of the pros of him and we should at least mention that he does have a relic and a lot of commanders in the game right now do not have a relic and essentially this in the season of conquest will give him that march speed that he desperately needed and you can even upgrade it to 15 percent now here you get a little bit more counter attack damage but really I mean it's not enough damage and it the march speed yeah it's it's nice but uh, i don't know man i don't know it's just this upgraded relic is like putting makeup on a pig sure it looks a little bit better if you're getting pretty desperate if you know what i'm saying but at the end of the day it's still a pig you know he really needed something exceptional here uh and unfortunately he didn't now if his second star relic was like 30 percent march speed and like 10 percent counter attack damage he's still probably wouldn't be used for pvp very much except for one usage which we'll talk about in a moment but as far as relics go at the end of the day do i recommend upgrading his relic no i don't you can see here that i i haven't done it okay i unlocked his relic a long time ago for canyon and i did not upgrade the relic it's just expensive and these coins are very premium now so richard is just not it it's not worth getting for basically a pve commander now let's talk about the cons of richard okay the cons of Richard are very numerous okay if you look at his active skill it's a heal and it's a debuff there is no damage here there's no instant proc damage on any of his other skills there's no normal attack damage buff there's a small counter attack damage buff but if you look at somebody like Martel for example he has a 30 percent counter attack damage buff whereas Richard only has 10. so really Richard is a very supportive tank uh and he cannot deal damage back he is effectively a punching bag 
in the open field because he has the healing factor yes he's going to last a long time but your trades are going to be really bad with Richard okay Richard in the open field is basically feeding your enemy free kills now the benefit of Richard in the open field is that if somebody's targeting him he's going to last longer than they might expect it's actually it's actually quite annoying to hit a Richard in the open field because you just want to kill him and move on to the next target but he just stays there for a while and you would think in season of conquest surely you can melt him quickly yeah kind of but it, it's it's still annoying so there's really not a great use for pvp for him and we will talk about a good use in, in just a moment when we talk about commander pairs um but the other con here is march speed there's no march speed here on richard and he's infantry so he's already very slow because he's infantry and there's nothing you can really do about it he's just going to be a slow punching bag okay good luck debuffing the enemy when you get when the enemy's gone okay by the time you get there he's like the internet explorer of of commanders okay he's he's done he's not he's not he's still in 2022 that's how slow Richard is okay very slow no damage those are the biggest downsides to him now let's talk about who should get Richard like who should use him right I think pretty much every player in the game should get him uh and I think that pretty much every player in the game should have a 5111 Richard. That's pretty much where you want to stop. If you want to go a little bit further, you could do 5511 and that's pretty good. Okay? You could pretty much leave him there and 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 then you're Gucci. If you're a whale, then uh you want to expertise him in KVK1 or you know, you could leave him at 5551 and you're really golden there. But the whales are the only people that are really should be getting this this expertise because this fourth skill is not very good and the expertise really is only okay and even this third skill I mean you get 20% more stats by getting it from one to five and 20% of stats is like Nevsky starts with 20% of stats right so we're talking about like legendary commander sculptures going into Richard or going into a newer commander just you just don't want to use them on Richard it's just a waste all right let's talk about some commander pairs for Richard now if you're in the early game this is really the only time you're gonna really consider using Richard I would say and if you're using Richard primary there's a couple of options that you have obviously in the early game right KV k1 uh you could use him with somebody like martel obviously that's a good choice it's a very tanky commander pairing the healing combined with the shielding is nuts the thing about having richard debuff the target the healing combined with the shielding here is very good you're also gaining a ton of infantry stats and there is some march speed on an expertise martel keep that in mind it's not on base martel only expertise unfortunately which makes it very unlikely that you'll have this in kvk1 but if you do you get the extra extra march speed here okay which richard really needs the counter attack damage is nice here this is just a solid extremely tanky march realistically though in kvk1 you're probably only gonna have somebody like sun tzu and you know this is fine uh the thing about this is that Sun Tzu actually deals damage okay he has a five target AoE with the rage regeneration very good okay very good he's also giving you 10% less damage which hey that's great Richard is already taking 15% less here but he also gives you 10% infantry health which is very good and unfortunately the skill damage is only going to be good for Sun Tzu but realistically this is a solid kvk1 pairing I really like that I think Martel Sun Tzu is a better pairing but you could definitely do something like this moving past kvk1 you could start to look at something like an ethel fled back here uh in kvk1 you typically don't have very much progress on ethel fled if you have her at all but the thing about this is that this is actually a very supportive march okay we talked before about how richard doesn't really do anything besides just be tanky and supportive and ethel fled hiding behind that richard is going to be really good because richard's not really a threat in the open field right like people yeah they want to hit him if they're greedy for kills but like really you shouldn't be hitting a richard in the open field there's no point it's not like he's gonna hurt you like what's he gonna do he's not gonna do anything right so if people leave your Richard alone which they should be doing then your Ethel Flood behind him is going to actually do a really solid debuff to five targets has a pretty nice AOE damage factor and you also deal more damage to enemies that are slowed and remember you have a few different ways of slowing the target Ethel Flood herself deals a little bit of a slowdown here on her second skill with a 10 percent chance but Richard's active skill actually deals a slowdown here as well and his expertise Peace deals a really powerful slowdown if you did go ahead and bring him all the way there so you're gonna get a lot of benefit out of this 20 percent bonus damage from ethel fled by putting her behind richard now again this army's still not really gonna deal that much damage because ethel Flood's aoe is relatively weak and richard himself is not dealing much damage but the fact that you just get that elevation pretty frequently is nice and this is a pretty good way to get your ethel Flood out in the open field if you want to do a more supportive march as well you could do something like alexander the great and i would actually recommend probably alexander the great prime uh and Richard's secondary it depends if you want more tank 
go with Richard. And if you want to hide your Alex, go with Richard. But if you want more damage, the attack tree is going to be it for Alexander the Great. And this is just also more support in the open field. Okay. You're not only going to shield yourself, but you'll pass around some shields as well. And three enemies in the circular AOE will take 30% increased damage, which is great. You're not going to be the one dealing that damage, but at least your other armies or nearby allies will be, which is pretty good. And he's giving you a ton of bonus stats here, mainly infantry attack and March speed, which again, you don't have a lot of March speed. You have none on Richard and the extra attack is just nice in general. Plus Alexander the Great's not that tanky. So having Richard behind him makes him a little bit more tanky, which he really needs. Now we could talk about Richard YSG, but I already mentioned him before. And really this is your, this is your barb killing machine. This is what you're going to use to kill barbs. You're really not going to use this in PVP because the damage just isn't there and you're wasting this 50 percent increased skill damage on ysg by putting him with a richard in pvp so really not a great pvp march so we're really not going to talk about that but the hidden pairing that you could do starting in kvk2 is saladin primary with richard secondary and this is a very unique combination but the benefit of this pairing is that you are going to slow down targets so much it's actually insane now of course if you do this it's going to be all cavalry okay because saladin is the primary and he has the cavalry tree so it's going to be full cavalry you're going to miss out on these stats but remember if you're most players you have a 5511 or a 5111 richard and this these stats it's irrelevant and anyway okay the first two skills here it doesn't matter what it doesn't matter what troop type he's actually paired with so if you look at the synergy here it's actually kind of insane because Saladin being cavalry is actually going to make Richard very quick. Okay. His active skill is going to deal single target damage. Not that impressive, but it will reduce the March speed and healing for five seconds. That's very long. That's a very long debuff. 30% reduced March speed is huge. And once you've slowed them down with Saladin, who actually has a chance of catching them because he's cavalry, then you're going to hit them with the debuff on Richard's skill here, which is not only going to heal you, but also you're going to reduce the enemy's March speed again. Now these overlap, unfortunately, but only for the target that you're actually hitting. This also debuffs, remember up to four other nearby targets. So this is an AOE slowdown and this is going to make your Saladin a bit more tanky. Okay. Saladin is already pretty tanky because he takes 30% less skill damage and 20% less counterattack damage. Now you're adding even more or less counterattack damage and all damage reduction, which is huge. But the best part is actually if your Richard is expertise. So this is a very well combination. Okay. Most players cannot do this, but if your Richard is expertise, then this 50% March speed reduction every 10 seconds is going to be huge. Okay. Because again, Saladin as a cavalry commander is going to help you catch up to those targets as long as you stay connected for 10 seconds it's like an instant snare okay it instantly applies a five second 50 percent march speed reduction which is a very powerful march speed reduction and if you use this combination right here your other armies so your other three or four armies that you're using are really going to be able to swarm down that target that just can't get away it can't get away it's slowed down by saladin it's slowed down by richard it's slowed down by richard's expertise there's so much slowdown here it's ridiculous this is like the ultimate slowdown army but again it's unfortunate kind of only a whale army and really it's not going to deal that much damage this is a very niche use case uh, but you could definitely try it out now some players have tried replacing saladin uh, with somebody like Guan Yu right now Guan Yu definitely misses a lot of the things that uh, Saladin has like being cavalry and having his own slowdown but if you're just trying to get this expertise in the open field you could definitely hide your Richard behind your Guan Yu if that's all you care about are you going to get good trades not with this March okay maybe your other marches are going to get good trades because Richard is snaring them in one in one spot but yeah this is for those uh really advanced players who just have plenty of commanders that and they just don't know what to do with them you could give this one a try and that's pretty much it unfortunately Richard's only good in the late game for PVE content doing really good tanky stuff for events and Canyon and for those whales he can kind of be a really good snare unit besides that PVP wise he's pretty much in the garbage and no you should not get his relic with that being said guys if you found this video entertaining or informative drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton of helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it if you're new here consider subscribing and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your thoughts on Richard did you actually get him when you first started the game or did you completely pass and do you regret it I would love to know with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace